Good evening. Hi, welcome everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bali. Welcome to the Amsterdam Polish Film Festival. My name is Jante Mosselman and I will moderate this evening for you. Uh, it's the second day of the festival and today we will talk with film director Agnieszka Holland, uh, whom this third edition of the festival is dedicated to. We will talk with her and you will also have the opportunity to ask questions. And after that, um, we will speak with migration expert Hein de Haas and actress Jolie Mabundu, who played a part in the Green Border. But first, let me please introduce to you, to you Agnieszka Holland. Uh, she is one of Europe's most important filmmakers. You will all know her work. She's won numerous awards, a Golden Globe, uh, recently the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Los Angeles Critics. Um, yesterday, her movie, A Lonely Woman and Fever, were screened. And hopefully you were all there to see the green border. Please give her a really warm applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. Okay. Yes, 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 it does. Um, maybe because this festival not only showed the Green Border, but of course also films from your previous work, and therefore I also wanted to ask you maybe to take us back all the way to the 70s when you started film school. And I wanted to ask you do you remember why was it cinema for you? back then? Um, that is quite a long journey, you know, because it was like um, uh, 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was 15 when I decided that I want to make films in communist Poland, it was. And some of the um, directors from the communist country afterwards, after when, you know, when, when, the, when the iron uh, curtain um, ended, uh, explained that it was very difficult to find for the creative people or for the people who've been entrepreneur or for the people who wanted to be independent, express themselves. And so uh, to find the field when you can be really free somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, if somebody had that kind of the character, it was impossible. And in the same time, didn't like the ideology and the, and the authoritarian regime. Uh, it was um, impossible to go to the politics. Um, if you wanted to 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 create or produce the things, in the the, the uh, private industry didn't exist and private business. So somehow, um, artistic field have been uh, have been or cinema especially uh, for those overactive people. It was the possibility to 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 find the pos to, to find it. Uh, but I was like kind of creative child from um, the very beginning and I wanted to be a painter. And um, when I was uh, uh, about 15, I realized that uh, painting and uh, drawing, um, even if, I, if it was my passion and um, that is more hobby than entire way to express myself. Uh, and I asked myself the question who I really am and what I really need in order to be myself. And I, I made three points, which um, unfortunately I lost that paper, but like 20 years ago, I still have it someplace uh, when I wrote it down. Uh, first, it was like um, a visual expression. Second, it was storytelling, tell the stories. I was telling, reading the stories, listening to the stories and the, telling the stories all the time. And third one, it was to tell people what they have to do. It means the power. <laughs> and um, and when I put it uh, together, I realized that it's exactly you know the film director. So then I uh, focused, and uh, for next two or three years before I made my baccalaureate and was able to uh, to try to go to the film school, uh, I, I watched the movies. It was my main occupation, and I then went to the school. I had the problems with you know passing to mm -hmm. the next class. Uh, sometimes um, and uh, and um, and I like became somebody so connected to the cinema um, that I realized that it's really the best way to 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 express and 
to, to, to show the world, to show my world and to describe the world, the objective world, and in the same time to use them in the most creative way your imagination. Uh, and it was it helped that it was great period because I I went by end of sixties to to the film school and that was the best period I think for uh, for world cinema the most creative and innovative and the, you had fantastic filmmakers geniuses like I don't know Bergman Fellini Antonioni and what uh, that, so what made it so good that period. I think that it was um, it was the moment in the um, history of the cinema where um, uh, where the cine- when many people realized and accepted that the cinema is a form of art mm-hmm. that it's not only like popular um, popular entertainment uh, but it is also um, something which can be the really personal expression of the filmmaker of an artist. And in the same time, the audience have been um, hungry to to meet something new, the new languages, the new stories, and um, and more uh, ambitious. It was, I think, that it was also that those people who've been great director in that time, they they um, they had the experience of the Second World War in some way. You know, not everybody have been in the occupied country or fighting or something. But the gravity of that uh, experience, which was one of the most terrible um, and cruel experience of um, of the of the history and certainly of the modernity, it shaped it shaped the curiosity of the viewers in the way that you can really you didn't need to all the time you know to um, to fight for the audience and to please the audience. They've been just open. That it, I think that that uh, great um, creative um, energy um, which um, was characteristic for the cinema of 60s 70s uh, it came not only from the from the filmmakers but it came also from the audience from the people who who've been excited to watch the things which needed from them um, to make the efforts to 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 open up to to have the patience and to be excited by the um, and 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 thrilled by the by the sometimes very complicated uh, complicated structures or mm-hmm. um, or stylistic um, devices would you say then also that if you've had really really dark times there's an extra longing for art well it depends you know it's uh, i think that it helps somehow of course and it, it helps to understand that that we cannot escape the freedom all the time and that we have fight for that and also that the freedom is something when we can find in the in the field of art that the art is a, that field uh, and the cinema in that time was considered as a some kind of the cinema as a art and not only in the art houses in Europe especially you had like great box offices for the most ambitious and more complex films. Uh, so, um, so it was the, it was the space of freedom, and um, it was cherished by 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 the filmmakers and by the audience. And dark time, yeah, I think that some difficult experience can make people more stronger, mm. can uh, give them some kind of the. Uh, conscience that um, that we need to make the effort in order to achieve something which is valuable, and also that life is complicated and mm-hmm. um, life is complicated and people are very complex and you don't have just black and white and that complexity of the vision of the world which came also from the literature, from the post-war philosophy, like existentialism and so. It um, it made people more like more creative as an audience. Frankly, I'm you know I, I I think that I don't know when we will have the such a fun, wonderful audience again, mm-hmm. uh, if uh, but that that it was reciproc. It was it was a real exchange. That's also something that you see very beautifully in your films. I think that there's always different positions morally 
Um, but you always also, and that really touches me, showed people doing good. And I was wondering, so for instance, in the Green Border, there's the people who help the refugees, but also in Mr. Jones, of course. And I wonder, do you tell these stories because you want to give people an example? Or is it just the way life is? It's not that, that simple. It means I, I don't believe in the... Um, pedagogical effect of this, in like straight pedagogical effect that um, I say, you see, here is a good person, mm -hmm. how nice she or he is, uh, how beautiful it is what, what he is doing. Of course, in that aspect, maybe a bit also, but for me, it's more the mystery. It means it's quite easy for us to understand evil, mm -hmm. to understand the crime to understand the the temptation of 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 of, um, of hate uh, and hate it, it's easy somehow you know the most of the popular um, cinema and especially tv series are dealing with the crime and perpetrators and um, and um, serial killers and and so on and so on and somehow rarely we are asking the question how it's possible that the humanity is producing such an amount of, of negative, but uh, we are pretty surprised when we are and suspicious uh, when we are meeting the goods. It means and and that is that is that mystery. Why what happened that some people? It's not the huge amount of the population. Mostly, it's not more than I don't know five percent. Uh, that they are able to sacrifice uh, their life sometimes and certainly their comfort and um, to stand up even against their own families or, um, or circles or bubbles and uh, do the things which are not popular because it's some kind of the challenge to everybody, you know, if somebody are doing difficult difficult moral uh, actions, mostly he's challenging or she's challenging the people around and the people don't like it. Mm -hmm. You have the periods when suddenly, you know, it became some kind of the, uh, of the um, a massive movement, that movement of, you know, of the generosity, like it happened in Poland recently, three years ago, when the uh, full scale invasion um, of Putin to Ukraine started and, and Polish society, Polish uh, people, they spontaneously uh, moved toward the borders and organized in the way which was, uh, um, for me, unprecedented. Uh, thousands and thousands of people are helping some total strangers and was spending and taking them to their homes and so. And it it didn't end after a few days. It it, it took um, uh, it took months. Were you surprised by it? Yeah. Yeah, it means, yeah, especially that the, a few months before, uh, earlier started the crisis on the Belarusian border, which I'm showing in, in the Green Border. And here the reaction of the majority was totally different. Also reaction of the politicians, of course. And somehow, you know, it's much easier to do the good if you have the support and acceptance of the authorities, political authorities, religious authorities, and so on. Uh, but even um, even uh, even the activity of the people for helping Ukrainians have been much bigger than the official um, desire of the of the of the government. The government mm -hmm. after all, the, the the movement more than um, than initiated the movement, uh, and it was you know that contrast was striking. But I wasn't surprised. I I think that after living quite a long time and in different circumstances and. Um, making meeting many people with different experiences and making the films about about the the, the crimes against humanity as holocaust or holodomor and it, frankly nothing surprises me mm -hmm. that what people are capable to do for good and for the bad and I, I think that a part of the of the of the psychopaths, the, like decent regular human being, has as as much capacity and potential of the of the good acts and and the bad acts. 
but it is much easier to be bad than to be good. And it's much easier to support uh, the bad actions by, for example, the governments or other authorities. And the, 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 the bad seeds are um, growing much faster. Mm -hmm. They don't need so much of the fertilization and, and good needs the, needs the help, needs the, needs the care. I want to go a bit more into that, but first I wanted to ask you, because you brought it up now as well, you've made these films about the Holocaust and about the Holodomor. And I was wondering why for you is it important to, to show these histories? Because I felt that it didn't end. I felt that it just was somehow uh, put to sleep. Mm -hmm. that the um, humanity, especially people in the Europe or United States, in the rich countries, which, um, which went through that experience directly or through their armies, um, have been somehow vaccinated. Uh, and, you know, that vaccine was quite, quite active in Europe. We can see it quite obviously. And the creation of European Union was one of the... Um, one of the effect of um, the vaccination and um, believe that it's possible to create the community where the nationalism um, and selfishness of of, um, of uh, countries and states is not the main uh, uh, main um, reason you know to 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 do the politics uh, but with time that uh, that um, that immunity um, evaporated and i think that I, I was feeling it for last probably 20 years, mm -hmm. maybe longer, and even before that what happened once certainly can happen again, maybe with different, maybe, you know, the perpetrators will change to the victims and the victims to the perpetrators. Um, it doesn't matter, but what matters is that we are um, capable again, if we want to escape uh, the confusion, fear, and freedom, we are able again of the most terrible acts. And I believe that right now we are in that situation. We are, um, it's going faster than I expected. I'm telling, I'm speaking about, I'm explaining that danger for, 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 I don't know, maybe 10 years and certainly very actively for like eight years and for like last three, four years. And now it accelerated, and I think that it will be very difficult to to stop it just by um, goodwill or by political will. Mm -hmm. no, because I think that's also really apparent in your life and very grim in a way that when you started out as a filmmaker, you were arrested at the Prague Spring. Um, your films were banned in the martial law. And now with the film, The Green Border, the reactions of politicians to your work, again, are horrible as well. Yeah, it was horrible. And it was like organized by the highest authorities of, of um, Polish government and the hate campaign against me, our film, and uh, some, uh, some other people con uh, connected to the film. And uh, and somehow it was unprecedented because even during the communist time I I never was the object and no on my on the people I know of such a such a, a widespread campaign. But at the same time, you know, it was still democratic country to some extent, and we've been able to show the films in the theater. <laughs> and the theaters man managers they be, some of them have been threatened or asked to show some you know propaganda clip before. And they refused, and maybe it was two or three cinema in the entire country who like um, accepted that kind of the censorship. Uh, so you know, it, and you know, the people have been going to the to the to the to the theaters, and somehow, um, I our my distributor would never have enough of money to pay the campaign promotional campaign which was made by polish president or minister of justice yeah. we, <laughs> yeah. we had we had great box office because of that so you know it it's much more <laughs> it is it was very unpleasant a bit dangerous because we and i started to receive the threats of that and so but in the same time i i didn't feel that they like it's not like go to prison or to be to be to be banned completely or to be uh, to be um, uh, censored uh, for good. 
So, you know, we are living, it's like a gray zone, even in, in, in Putin's Russia, which is um, obviously a dictatorship and the regime, it's still possible somehow, you know, to tell the things which are, have the passport, for example, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the person who is, um, who is against the, the, the regime, and the regime knows about it, uh, but not always arrest you. Sometimes they arrest you and can mm -hmm. put you, to, I don't know, 15 years, or even kill you, like, um, uh, like Alexei Navalny. Uh, but in the same time, somebody like that can get the passport and go, you know, to England or Germany mm -hmm. or whatever. It, it, it's much more messy, the world now. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Uh, it, it. It's also more difficult, you know, make the choices. Somehow, when you are in the real oppression, uh, real occupation, the most courageous people know where to go. Mm -hmm. and here, a lot of people are confused. Uh, but I'm not complaining, of course. That they didn't. Because confusion not, might be not helpful. Me, not yes. Me in the. In the <laughs> And I don't know, concentration camp, I'm yeah. happy to, to be free. Yeah, of course. Maybe one more question before we go to the green border, because that's something that I wonder about, because in your film, The Green Border, of course, it's, it tells a story about something that they don't want the people to know. You've also made the comparison to the, the Vietnam War. When the stories come out, something can really change but it's also i think there's forms of art that are less opening up uh, a certain stories that they want to be hidden but they're still in a way i think the 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 nationalists the authoritarians they have a real fear i think of art because they always go after the artists they always want to keep them silent and lock them up, even if they're not even super political. What do you think they fear in art? Um, they feel like, uh, that's a fear of freedom, exactly. That, that kind of freedom, which is very difficult to, you know, to, to kill. Mm -hmm. uh, it means you can be you can be silenced really if 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 you are afraid if you are not afraid you cannot be silenced even if they kill you you know somehow i don't know i don't want to be too pathetic you know like but yeah it, it is something they cannot understand you know that courage of of or, or uh, perseverance uh, or impact even sometimes of, of the art but unfortunately you don't have so much of art which is so courageous in our days, not only politically, but also in terms of the, um, of the um, courage of, of new expression, you know, new languages or new, I think that we are in pretty bad, bad, bad place as a filmmakers for sure. I Why? think it, I don't know. I think that, I think we are, we are too lazy. We are, you know, the comfort was too big. We don't want to leave our comfort zone. It's too easy to make movies. And you don't need even to have the box. In Europe, you don't need to have the box office in order to make the next film. Um, which is great that you have the state support and public support and so, but in the same time, it makes people very dependent on the, you know, on the on that support. And um, by the end of the day, conformist. And, um, and and that kind of the clientelism that you know that the, the 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 government gives me money to make my film so I cannot you know to be to be too brave because I can like make them angry not mm -hmm. and say not only because of the political subject or statement but also because I do something they don't like they you know it's plenty of things which governments think that they need to control. And um, so uh, I think that we are too dependent and I think that we are too, uh, it's, it's impossible to make really good film if you don't feel that kind of the total freedom inside of it. It's been total, it's impossible, but enough of freedom to, <laughs> to take the risk. This thing you say about the comfort zone, I think it's very important in your work because you switched also the, the sort of films that you make in your career. Sometimes you decided to go and do something really different than you've previously done. And I wonder, how do you know you're getting too comfortable? 
Oh, probably I feel it. I, you know, probably it makes me, probably, I think that the main thing which is like dri- driving me is a curiosity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I survived many difficult moments in my life because I was curious what will be next, what will come next, how it is to be, for example, in the prison, what, how I will be in that circumstances which are out of, of, of the comfort. And uh, and same with the movies, uh, to try to tell a different story or tell it a different way or to do something which is really risky and I don't know for sure how to do it, how to make it. And it can be a disaster, it can be the failure. So, um, so I think that um, I think that that curiosity, as long as it will stay with me, will uh, push me to to make something maybe different and for mm-hmm. maybe better and for sure different. Mm-hmm. And then the green border. Um, as I said, we in the audience just watched it. It's an incredible movie. And it's a very, also a very touching movie. It's very emotional. And I read that you said in an interview about it that you sort of almost as a surgeon try to keep also a distance from it when you're making it. And I was wondering, how do you do that? I, you know, I learned it also when I was doing the Holocaust movies. Of course, afterwards, you you feel it. It means it's, it's not totally innocent to make the films which are so emotionally challenging and so so terrible somehow, you know, when show, um, are showing the films, which uh, the things which are so uh, cruel and the, and the violence, not only the physical violence, but also psychological violence. And um, when we wrote Green Border, and it was based on the, everything was based on the documents, statements, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, images and so, so um, real stories. So it's it's not a lot of imagination. They're practically nulla. Uh, our work it was to to the storytelling and the structure and the composition and the and the, you know what what you need to keep the tension that the viewer watching the film like that black and white two and half um, uh, hour long film about about the migration uh, will not leave the theater and will be sitting you know with the will be involved, will be will become the part of that of that experience. Uh, so that it was our goal in the first place. Um, and that is why I was I was I I wasn't like shouting on I was I tried to 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 give the voice to everybody somehow and to keep the balance. Me mm-hmm. and my collaborators it was very much collective work we Wrote the script. Three of us were, uh, wrote the script, and then it was also two young w- women directors who mm-hmm. been in co um, co shooting. It means we, we divided the, the crew to two parallel units, not on all days, but on several days. And then I read that you work also in this film with real people, not only with actors. Yeah, but main characters are professional actors, mm-hmm. but it, they happen to have that experience also. Mm-hmm. Because in, in, especially the actors who are playing Syrian family are the real refugees. Uh, they happen to be the, 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 ma, uh, ma, uh, father and, and the grandfather happened very famous actors in the native Syria before became, uh, becoming yeah. you know, the political refugees. Uh, and, um, and Dalia, who plays mother, uh, Amina, uh, she uh, is not, I think she was born already in France or anyway out of Palestine, but she's from Palestine. She's Palestinian refugee living after in Liban. So um, they knew it, you know, and um, Maya, Maya Ostaszewska, who plays um, Julia, the, the Polish character, she she's very active. She's, she's a famous Polish actress, very popular somehow, and, and great Polish actress also in the theater, but she went to the border yeah. and she was doing the work, the like, you know, humanitarian work with the, with the activist. And so, and, and after she became some kind of the spokeswoman for the cause to trying to, you know, to, to reach um, the, 
main, uh, main, mainstream media to, to, to tell that story and to tell about what's going on. And till now we are doing it, she and me, because the situation, unfortunately, is not changing for the good. And uh, the new government, which won the elections, also maybe slightly because of the, of the popularity of our film, um, it's um, using the same language and the same acts, and even it's going further somehow in legalization of the, you know, of the... And in the first place, all politicians in Europe now realized that they want to do the same as populists are doing. It means, and you in Holland know it as well, uh, to, to take over the same agenda as mm -hmm. the populist fascists are doing and um, and in the same thing they are afraid that if they will show the humanitarian face they cannot ever win the elections yeah uh, I think because I did some movies about 30s and Holocaust I think there's a big mistake because um, in 30s also the liberal Democrats were thinking that if they will take over a uh, fascist agenda they can beat uh, Hitler and in reality you never stealing the agenda of the from the from the fascists you are never winning with them because the people you let um, make them legal somehow credibilize them and um, give them the red carpet to the mainstream mm -hmm. uh, and it's why I'm so sad about it and I don't see the politicians who have another idea how to deal with that knowing of course that the migration is probably uh, politically and socially speaking, now the biggest challenge for um, for um, for the rich countries because Europe is not ready uh, and will be not ready uh, to um, welcome all the people who want to come here. is is impossible. But the question is, if except of the of the propaganda, hate, and and the lies and violence, if we have another idea how to uh, change it, how to stop it or how to, you know, how to how to find the balance. And I don't see that idea. So um, I think that the next step is with the help of the of the democratic um, politicians, uh, the people, the, the Europeans will accept that we need to kill the people who try to pass the borders. And mentally, we are in that place already. I'm reading now the commentaries in the liberal newspapers in Poland and then Half of the, you know, commenters, even more, maybe 80 percent, is we have to kill them, we have to shoot them, we have to sink the boats, we have to do that and that. That is that is already on the on the, you know, public place. That kind of the uh, of the um, conscience. It's truly horrible. One of the things you said, maybe as a last question. Um, one of the things you said about this as well is that what's happening at the border is not as much a political battle, but it's a moral battle. Yes, and I think that Putin and Lukashenko, who are the, the you know the uh, master of, of 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 ceremony, puppet masters um, on our border in Poland or Lithuania and Finland, also they know very well uh, that they are winning in the moment when we totally like deny our morality and uh, and um, uh, what is the base of the you know post-war european civilization it means human rights and and you know um, egalité fraternité liberté so uh, so they are winning they are yeah. they don't need thanks for that uh, yeah. they are just giving them that not only satisfaction but um, uh, but also situation. I mean, I'm, but you know, I, I'm thinking, of course, and reading a lot about, about geopolitical consequences of, of many things, and also about what it means for, um, for the, for the, for the African situation. How much uh, Putin, for example, is winning in Africa, because of how we are dealing with with the African problem and the, and the. Um, uh, the spies and you know and uh, non-understanding and racism we are showing to them more and more but um, but what I'm interested in really is like the human lives and choices and the individual human beings and is what what is our film about it mm -hmm. is not about Mr. Putin and his uh, 
and his, you know, manipulation. It is about the simple people who just have unique life. They will not have other, and they try to make the best out of that. And they are fighting for for the security, the freedom, some wealth, the, something meaningful and dignity for many things. Thank you for now. I'm going to ask and see if there's anyone in the audience who wants to ask you a question as well. Yes, okay, I'm coming towards you with the microphone. Oops. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Najpierw chciałam po polsku, Pani Agnieszko, dziękuję bardzo za, za Pani obecność i za bycie tutaj z nami. To jest naprawdę niesamowite przeżycie. And now to be more inclusive, I'll ask in English. I was wondering, so one of the things that, one of the many motives I, I, I've noticed in your movie was this dichotomy, this contrast, right? There's so many black and white, left and right, however you want to put it. And I was wondering if perhaps you have some piece of advice on how to navigate this very difficult architecture, how to create some form of a dialogue. How do we find a way forward? Thank you. But you mean um, dialogue between whom and whom? Yeah, I would say the, the dichotomous people who are definitely on the different sides of the spectrum, so to say. Yeah, it you know it was. I think it was possible, and you know, when the situation exactly after the Second World War showed how possible it is to find the, some kind of the agreement, compromises, and the, and common understanding. But now I think it it is extremely difficult, and not only because the politicians are stupid, they are, but um, uh, but because you know it, it is the effect of the. Mm, complexity of the challenges of the modernity we we can we don't know how to deal with so um the situation is so complicated i meaning you know now climate catastrophe migration and internet revolution uh, globalization that the people feel that they cannot find the way to uh, to win it so they are looking for somebody who will tell give give them the simple solution um, and they are they are mostly populist, and the the, the simplest uh, tool how to how to win the attention and confidence and con confidence of the people is is to create the hate and fear, and the social media are spreading this so well, and now we have um, an artificial intelligence to help. That I is just you know even if you are if you are going to the, on the social media if you are active on the social media, you see very quickly that even in your bubble when you have only you know the friends who have very similar you know life experience and opinions and taste and so uh, very quickly comes to some kind of the divisions which are so violent and so you know so. Um, uh, and, and, and it's uh, re impossible to repair uh, that what happens between the people who really have very different uh, point of view and 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 um, and, and life um, uh, life vision. Uh, it, it is we are just not wanting to see um, to see the complexity of the people and of the of the things. We don't. We are not curious about the differences. We want to everybody to be the same. And if it's not the same as me, um, we become incredibly judgmental, and we are able to 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 to, uh, to deny him the right to to have his own life and his own and his own choice. Uh, so I, I I don't see the I don't see the atmosphere. I don't see the space for um, collaboration and uh, and compromise and you see it also in um, in the institution like um, united nation or even european union which quite long was the example exactly of of um, of um, of the politic where it's possible and necessary to find the agreement and to um, take in consideration uh, different, very often opposite um, 
opposite um, desires or, or needs. Uh, I don't see that space. So it's why I think that, sorry, you know, that it maybe doesn't sound very optimistic, but I think that we are in already mentally in the war, uh, in the global war. And if it will come and be become the military um, experience, I don't know, but if you watch Middle East, Israel, uh, Gaza, Lebanon, and uh, Iran, and uh, on another hand, um, Russia and Ukraine, and China, and so, and um, uh, possibility that uh, the pre next president of um, of United States will be the guy we already know. Uh, that is uh, that shows that it's very very little chance. Uh, that the people will unite in something positive. Thank you. Is there someone else who wants to ask a question? Yes. Do you think maybe that uh, in the base of all of it come lies that we just have a basic lack of knowledge of each other? Yes. About Africa, about Middle East, about neighbors, people. Can we sort of spread the news? Well, yeah, but you know, it, it's not that we cannot because, you know, we have access to all possible informations. Uh, we don't want to know. We are not curious. It's why I say that what, what keeps me going, it is curiosity. I'm losing the curiosity. You have to find the, the, that comfort zone, exactly, where you feel that you are right and, um, and, and you have to protect that comfort zone. And what we are doing now, we are protecting our comfort zone, and we are uh, we are ready to to sacrifice the values we believed um, 30 years ago, uh, 50, 60 after the second war, after 89, and so we are we are capable to sacrifice those values to keep our comfort. Um, but unfortunately, I I believe that by the end of the day, we will lose our comfort and we lose our values in the same. We'll, will remind with the, you know, empty hands. But yes, it will be much easier to um, to look for the solution if we'll uh, be knowing, you know, the others, people, um, agendas, uh, experiences, um, uh, desires, everything, needs. But we, we, are, we are not curious. We rather accept the, some kind of the, um, uh, simplified vision or um, we accept that uh, the people like, for example, the, um, the migrants on Polish-Belarusian borders are presented by the previous government as a terrorist, zoophiles, pedophiles and Lukashenko weapons and um, um, by the new government as um, criminals and the mob. Maybe there's room for one more question, if anyone has one, yes. I had a short question about the ending of your movie because I think it was very touching, uh, the comparison between the Ukrainian-Polish uh, border and the Polish-Belarusian border. Um, wh why do you think, or maybe what do you think about uh, how we perceive uh, how well people see migrants and differentiate between them? So there is the better migrant that's allowed into Polish soil versus the other ones. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you had anything uh, to add to that. Well, the racism is a very simple answer, but it's not everything, I think. I think that it's also that, it, that in, in Poland especially, we felt that what, what happened to them can happen to us. And we have common uh, enemy and we have a, a big diaspora of Ukrainians in Poland before the war, and we, we speak similar language, we have similar, you know, same religion, and so on and so on. So yeah, it is much easier to, uh, to, 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 to show the compassion and active compassion uh, for the people who are like we. And if somebody has dark skin, he's not like we. He has dark, dark skin and comes from the country. We don't understand the politics and we don't understand why uh, why Syrian, some Syrian are fleeing their country and some Syrian are not fleeing their country and uh, what's going on in Sudan and what's the difference between Sudan and Somalia. And um, 
somehow it's it's so it's so messy you know that we don't want to be involved and we see those people as some kind of the uh, parasites who wants to 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 destroy our comfort and to eat our social security our social uh, security thank you very much for this conversation and maybe as a final question because also to end maybe on a sending you off uh, um, <laughs> you are working now on a film on Franz Kafka right why Kafka well, I loved Kafka. It means Kafka is somebody loved Kafka. Is maybe stupid to say, but yeah, <laughs> somehow, I, somehow I love that man. I love. I was. I felt. I read him when I was in the high school first time. After I made the adaptation for Polish television of the trial, I went to Prague partly to find, you know, the traces of Kafka, and. Um, and what he wrote was very important to me and very, you know, very like, I think, inspiring. But uh, also, I, I was, I was like very moved by 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 that human being that you know, fragile, a very strong, mysterious, you know, human being. And I wanted somehow to to find the way to touch him. To of course not to not to explain the mystery because most of the mysteries are impossible to explain, especially. Mm -hmm. But uh, and to, and also you know I, I I I was I was very curious to try to look for the language I can speak about Kafka through the film, and um, actually it's totally different from any films I made before, and uh, so it is uh, it is real experiment to me, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now because we already cut it together and show to some people, uh, I think that it works. So I'm kind of really excited about the moment when I will be showing it to the to the to the wider audience which will come sometimes in the next year we don't know when exactly yet I'm super excited as well um, thank you so much for being here and we will continue the conversation a bit more on the topic of the green border and hopefully uh, uh, see you again when the movie thank of you. Kafka is out thank you very much very much I'm sorry I'm not in person next time thank you Thank <laughs> you.